there's a very exciting wave of change that is going on on TikTok. That is a group of people that are calling themselves Zetarians, women that are empowered, that want to get a better life for themselves. And I'm so excited once and for all to see African women, Ghanaian women wanting a better life for themselves. Unfortunately, a certain sect of people have decided to take this very laudable, interesting and advantageous conversation to a whole new place, down in the dumps, down in the gutters and take something that was innocently pushed by a woman called Zeta in wanting to inspire women to want more saying to women that women are more than marriage, sex, having children, and being homekeepers, but also being able to be equal partners, participating in the common good of raising their families. I have a lot of male friends, and every single one of them that I know would always say to me that they're looking for women that are empowered, women that have an education or are running a business so that they can support them in running their homes. Nobody is looking for liabilities anymore. Those grandparents' ages where our mothers stayed at home, ran the home, cleaned the house, raised the children, whilst the men went out there to make money gave the women little or no choice when the men decided they were done with them and moved on to the next best woman. Our mothers and grandmothers were left with nothing because they didn't have an education. They didn't have any skill sets that were going to give them an income of survival or a means of survival. So a lot of them were compelled to stay in toxic marriages that ultimately killed some of them. I personally have been a witness to seeing people that I love and are blood related with that faced this exact fate. You see, a lot of men who want to control women and are just looking for people who will just be yes or master kind of women that would allow them to continue in dysfunctional behavior, sleep around with anything in skirts, with no accountability, be lazy, not partake in the upbringing of their children, not raise a finger around the house. They can go out and be with women for days on end, but when they come back, their wife shouldn't say anything. They should just be happy and feel privileged that they went out, but they came back to them. Any man that is like that doesn't want to be a one woman sort of man. They just want to do what they like without any consequence. Back in our great grandmother's days, because they didn't have an education, because of that education that didn't give them no tools to live their own lives and be able to raise enough money to look after their children, they stayed in marriages that, quite frankly, where no marriages. But fortunately today, a lot of women have been sent to school, have been able to learn a trade out of the skills that they got from the education. As I'm sat here, I'm a civil engineer by profession. And thanks to the parents that saw the sense in taking myself and my little sisters all to school today. They have an engineer, they have a lawyer, they have a doctor, and they have a nurse practitioner as well. They are so blessed and fortunate to have four daughters that are empowered, able to look after themselves, not reliant or dependent on any man for anything, but can provide for themselves. Now I see this argument about people having masters and PhDs that are, have no character. Education is not a function of a person's character. Education gives you options 
education gives you credibility and clout. There are certain things that an educated person wouldn't do. But if the person chooses to have a character that is not commensurate with their standard, that has nothing to do with education. There are some very uneducated women that are really, really rude and disrespectful too. And quite frankly, any man with his sword wants nothing to do with those kinds of women. People moan and whinge and complain and make all this noise about women not being educated, blah, blah, blah. When it comes down to it, though, those are the same sorts of women that they still go for. Why? Because they know that they will be an asset, a valuable asset that can help them to get what it is that they want to get. If you're a man and you're married to a woman that would call you in the middle of a meeting, because there's no salt in the house. Would you be happy? When the woman walks into your office, when you're there in a board meeting, what is it? There's no salt at home. I've gone to come and collect money to go and buy salt. Would you be happy? But if you're married to a woman that has a profession of her own, which she got because she went to school, so it gave her an advantage. It gave her the tools that she needed the skill set that is required to be able to occupy that position of a job. And by the time you come back home as a man, your wife is also able to help you take care of business, pay little bills around the house, help your children with their clothing to go to school. Are you not moving forward as a person? It is very unfortunate. The whilst this deterioration movement is really trying to get women out there to have a second think of their lives and make something out of themselves. There are other people who are trying to take this whole conversation to a whole new place, to the gutters, and take attention from the actual point that is being raised and move it to something else. Education and marriage are two very different things. Character and education are two very different things. The two don't be even belong in one sentence. All that is being said is, if you're a woman and you haven't got an education, go and get one. If you have an education to a certain level and you can do better and you have it in you to do it, go get out there and do better for yourself. And you see, one thing that really upsets me a lot is that People are rubbishing PhDs and master's degrees and degrees as if they are nothing. But these same people haven't even sat in a classroom themselves to know what it takes <laughs> to get those titles, MSc, BSc, and a PhD or a doctor after your name. As a girl that was raised by a PhD holder, born and raised by a PhD holder, of her father and having siblings, one of whom has already had her PhD and the other one on her way. I can tell you on good authority that I am super proud of all the things that they have been able to accomplish. And those of you who think that PhD is just something and that how does PhD help society? You're very ignorant, unfortunately. And I'm really sorry for you because all the world problems that have been solved have all been based on research from medicine to social issues to legal issues to everything. All these people, all the solution to the world's problems that are there, um, oftentimes based on research that people have done to find solutions to problems. So PhD holders do research. They find a problem and they find a solution to them. But obviously, if you decide that you're closed minded and you're not going to open yourself up to really come to a conversation and really bring ideas that are going to help move this agenda forward, then this is how it's always going to be. And it's so sad that it is all the men that want to have total control over women. They call it submission. That are there following people and taking attention, valuable attention away from the real issues that are at stake. Because of somebody's 
lack of education. She was made pregnant by a man. The man told her to mix ampicillin with Malta Guinness and salt and lemon and everything in between. She drank that and she almost lost her life. If this woman could read, if this young child could read, and she had been to school to any level, she would understand that those things, those ingredients don't belong together. And these are some of the things that are being talked about. Open up your mind. When you're coming into a debate, come prepared. Come with facts and figures. Don't take issues to the dumps and try to discredit them because it's real live situations that are solved by educated people. There's another woman who tragically almost killed somebody. Why? Because she was uneducated. She had done, I had the story on TikTok, person had done somebody's her, her client's hair and had sprayed this thing that was flammable on the client's hair. Next thing, she had a candle ready to burn the edges of the hair that were still sticking out from the plaits that she had just done. And as soon as the, the flame caught the substance that had been sprayed on the hair a few seconds back, it caught fire. Luckily for the client, there was a basin of water and she dipped her head into it, quenching the fire. She could have easily terminated this woman's life because of sheer negligence and ignorance of the fact that that substance that she had just sprayed on her client's hair was flammable. These and many more are the things that happen when people are not educated, cannot read and write, do simple things for themselves, and they are taken undue advantage of. And these are some of the things that is Zeterians are fighting for. When women are empowered, when women have the tools of education, they can make something better of their lives. Let's stop misconstruing and, and putting character and wisdom and knowledge in the same box because each of them is an exclusive item. Nobody can say that knowing how to read and write or attaining a higher level of education, if that opens doors for you, it's not a good thing. Anybody who says that is just threatened. Some men just don't have the balls to deal with educated women. I know many men who wish that they had had the opportunities that other men and women of today had had would have made different choices about going to school. And all of these men have wives <laughs> that have attained high levels of education, degrees, master's degrees. Some of them even have PhDs. And these men are super proud of their wives and won't stop talking about them and all the value that they bring into their life. So when somebody is rude and disrespectful, it has nothing to do with the higher level of education that they have. They just lack character and upbringing. And that is a completely different issue. Let's understand this and stop taking and diverting attention from the real issues, the real social issues that are affecting and plaguing women in Ghana, in Africa, and actually help them to make smarter choices and be more valuable assets and participants in this thing called marriage. By the way, it's not everybody that is going to be married. It's not everybody that wants to be married. And it's not everybody that marriage is made for. And so let's stop making this conversation about marriage, having children and, and sex, because women are a lot more than all of that. Let us celebrate the women who have made successes of themselves, have made themselves better people and are solving world issues and stop trampling over them and making PhD, masters, BSc and all of those things, nothing but pieces of paper. All these people saying that don't have it themselves, go sit in a classroom for four years and get a BSc and no sense, know what it takes to get that.
then you can come back to the conversation and make noise. Let's stop rubbishing real efforts that some people have made to attain high levels of education. Whilst some people were busy studying, other people were busy opening their legs and having children that they can't even take care of or look after. A lot of these same men that are fighting will put poor, miserable, vulnerable women in family way and leave them by the wayside without an education, without tools to help them set up a business for themselves or to help them get a professional career if that's what they want to, so that they have what it takes to look after those children that a lot of irresponsible men have made with them and left by the wayside. These are the children that become the social misfits in, in society. And so let's have a frank, open, honest conversation. Let's not rubbish education. It is a valuable asset for anybody, especially women, to have in this 21st century. And stop saying things like, uh, I think um, this uh, saying that, you know, to educate a boy is to educate an individual, but to educate a woman is to educate a whole village. Of course it is because of the very nature of women. You see, people just don't understand things. When, it's, when one woman knows how to do something or has gained a new skill, she tells her friend who tells their friend who tells their friend. And before you know it, all the women have that skill and they support each other and move together as a united force for change. And that is what that saying is all about. Let's not make comments that are really going to push people forward all about sexism. Any man worth his salt, any man that is proud to have an asset for a wife will not be in these dumps and having these conversations that don't even make sense. Women when educated, women that have tools to be able to be helpmates to these men, the men who want to be and do something in this life, absolutely cherish those kinds of women. And so today, I am a proud woman that has attained a high level of education. I also was did my BSc in Ghana and a master's in Scotland, and I'm proud of my achievements and all the things that that has afforded me as a woman. I wouldn't trade it for anything. When I saw my great grandma live in a shitty marriage, all because she wasn't educated. If she had the same opportunities then that were given so freely to men, she would have made something else out of her life. And she inspired me so much with her own life to do better for myself and for the generations that will come after me. I thank God for the mom that I have that understood the importance of education and sold her clothes to make sure that her daughters got the best of education. And my father that believed so much in, her, in his daughters and gave us the best of everything that we needed. I'm super proud to be a, a, a responsible woman in society that adds value because I was given that opportunity as a girl child to get education to whatever level I wanted to. Let's make this conversation something that pushes positive change down to the last village in Ghana so that women are empowered and have the keys to make a better life for themselves, have the pen to sculpt a better life for themselves. My name is Sika. I love you all so much. Have a fantastic day. God bless you. Take care. Mwah. Bye.